Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Engineering Careers Superfair Mining and Energy Focus Session. My name is Sam, and I work for a company called Prospel. Um, for those not familiar with Prospel, we help to power a bunch of different careers boards, including Grand Australia, some of you might be familiar with, and we're helping to put on this event today. Um, but I'm joined by a number of um, people from the mining and energy sector, including the lovely Jamie from Alcoa, Genevieve from BHP, Mari from Rio Tinto, and Claudia from Shell. Um, before we kick off the event, though, I might just start quickly by acknowledging and paying respect to the traditional custodians of the land. Um, for me here in Melbourne, that is the uh, Wurundjeri and the Boomerang peoples. Um, I'd also like to pay respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I'd also like to do a bit of a extend a big thanks to Engineers Australia who have made today possible this Engineering Careers Super Fair. Um, the folks that Engineers Australia committed to helping um, to advance the engineering profession more broadly and making sure particularly that today's engineering students go on to begin careers that impactful, um, impactful some meaning in the future. And for those who aren't aware, as a student, you can sign up to be an Engineers Australia member for free. Um, all you have to do is jump on over to, and I'm gonna put in the chat for you all, a bit of a quick, easy reference. Jump over to that link I've just put into the chat panel there and sign up as a free, free member, which is great. But let's, why don't we stick, kick it off? And I'm going to quickly do a bit of an introduction to the panel. Um, again, as I've said, Jamie from Alcoa, Mari from Rio Tinto, Genevieve from BHP, and Claudia from Shell. And I might start firstly with Claudia. Um, can you give us a bit of a you know, quick introduction to yourself um, and describe what Shell does for everyone here. Hi everyone. So my name is Claudia. I am a graduate production engineer for Shell, but I fall under the process engineering skill pool. So um, basically that means my day-to-day -day job is optimizing our systems at QGC, which is a coal seam gas asset in Queensland. But um, essentially Shell has been in Australia for about 120 years now, and we sort of had a multitude of things happen. So we have moved from mining to perhaps what you would call conventional oil and gas, and now we're moving on into renewables and, energy, and the energy space. So that's sort of what we do here. So we're constantly evolving. Awesome. Thanks, Claudia. Um, same question to Jamie. Can you tell us a little bit about Alcoa and yourself? Hi, I'm Jamie Delgado. I am the powerhouse superintendent at um, Alcoa Quinana. I started as a graduate uh, electrical engineer and I've worked my way up into line supervision. For Alcoa, um, it's a company that um, produces bauxite, alumina and aluminium and has a number of uh, locations around the world with, um, sorry, with the Western Australia being a key play, player in the company. Awesome, thanks Jamie. Um, same question to Genevieve. Hi everyone, I'm Genevieve. I work up in Port Hedland for BHP. I'm the lead structural engineer up here. Um, so I started off with BHP as a graduate mechanical engineer. I uh, then worked in, after the grad program, I worked as a reliability engineer for a few years in, at Yandy. And I've now just recently moved to this role as lead structural up in Port Hedland. Um, so a bit about BHP, we have uh, a number of different assets. I've been working in the uh, West Australian iron ore assets for my career though. So I'll explain a little bit about that. We essentially um, mine up the iron ore and then it goes through the processing plant and then it gets transported off to the port um, on trains. So there's a number of different operations. Uh, we have five different mines in WA and we also have some staff working in uh, Perth. Um, yeah, so lots of uh, different areas of the asset. Awesome. And finally, um, last but not least, Mari. 
tell us about yourself and Rio. Hi everyone, my name's Mary Cameron. I'm the fixed plant manager at the West Angeles Operations, uh, Western Australia in Rio Tinto, Iron Ore. Um, a little bit about me, I joined Rio Tinto as a graduate geologist. Um, I actually studied in the UK and, and came across with Rio Tinto through my master's thesis. Um, started the grad scheme as a, as a geologist and um, I guess really, you know, can show you what type of career you might be able to have within the resources and energy sector. You might start at, at one point and end up somewhere that you didn't really expect. So um, that's been a highlight of my career so far. Um, a little bit about Rio Tinto. Um, we operate in, in the mines beneficiation and sales and marketing and research and development space. Um, we operate in a number of countries, 35 countries across the globe. Um, a number of different commodities with, with the bulk being iron ore, copper and aluminium. Um, so some really great um, sectors that we operate in. Awesome. Thanks, Mari and everyone there for the introductions. There. I might actually throw it back to you, Mari, for the, the question I've got, um, which is, I mean, you already started to talk a little bit about, I think, you know, what can change, but have you got any, like one piece or the most piece of important advice you'd give to students aspiring to work in the mining resources and energy sector? Sure. Um, I think it for those aspiring to work in the sector um, and considering having an application for, say, a grad scheme, um, I think it's really important for you to think about how your values might come across in your application. So um, all of the, the companies that you might be considering to apply for um, as part of our strategy or who we are on our websites, which is available externally, um, will show what the values are that mean the most to us. So for Rio Tinto, for example, safety, teamwork, respect, integrity, and excellence. Um, and think about how you can demonstrate living those values and your values in the experiences that you have had. So it's not necessarily about, these are all of the vacation programs that I've been on. This is the hours of experience I've spent. It's about how you have been able to demonstrate living your values um, through those experiences, however diverse they might be. Um, so think about how you can Number one, research what the company's values are that you're considering applying to, and then how you have lived those values in your lived experience. Same question, Genevieve. Um, most important piece of advice you'd give to students aspiring to work um, within the sector? Um, can be related to application, can be related to anything. Um, I think I definitely agree with what Mari said there um, about the values and also you really want to be um, honest in the interviews and sell your true self so that you find a company that does align with your values. Um, but in terms of while you're still at uni, I think the uh, most important piece of advice I'd give is there's going to be some of your uni work um, and the things that you learn that you will apply in your job. There'll be some that you don't apply in your job. Um, but the most important thing you're learning at uni is that work ethic. And the more you can practice that work, work ethic now while you're at uni, the easier it's going to be to transition into the workforce. Um, so I'd definitely, you know, practice those early mornings, spending a long day at the um, library and, um, you know, working well with others and developing that professionalism and those soft skills that will really help when you enter the workforce. Fantastic. Um, similar question, but um, Jamie, can you give us a bit of you know tips about what is it Alcoa looks for in the application, or even just something you did particularly to stand out, or or even just more, more advice on what students can do to stand out in the application progress process. In the application process, the two things that um, just being talked about is what we do look at. Um, then. One thing I could add to it is portraying your motivation, showing truly why you want that position and how you're going to be a key player 
in the company and um, going forward with what they're planning um, values wise and also where they're taking the company. Um, so I'd say to train your motivation or your dedication and commitment um, on top of saying where your values align with the company um, definitely does help. And it, it does come out, you can quite easily um, see people's motivations. So maybe have a few conversations with a few people around um, portraying your motivations and how it comes across to others. Following up from that, actually, I'm going to stick with you, Jamie. Sorry to throw you under the bus um, two in a row. What did you do when you were sort of applying um, for the program? How did you articulate your passion for you know, the sector? Um, I had done what everyone first does and researched the company and spend a few days looking through all the websites possibly can and learn the process. So Alcoa, um, the refineries have a four-step process. So we had to say all the different things about the company, which shows that you're interested and you really want to get in and you at least have the commitment to understand what the company is doing and what the process is that you're going to be working with. Um, for me, I had a bit of um, extra... Um, confidence because I already had a, a position elsewhere um, when I applied for our core. Um, so confidence in your, your own ability um, and to be able to sell yourself. Um, sometimes you can be your worst enemy when you're yeah. trying to portray to other people who you are. And it's really hard in a small snapshot to say everything. Plus, you've got the nerves on top of it. Yep. <laughs> um, and I, I'm a person who likes to um, do 100% the best of my ability at work. So I just try to portray that in the interview process. And it worked out. They called me within 45 minutes and offered me the job. <laughs> awesome. Um, Claudia, um, throwing to you next. In terms of yeah, what, what what does Shell look for in an application? Um, any any tips you give grads who are keen to move to the or interns keen to move to the next round? Um, and is anything you did yourself to really stand out in the process? Three part question there. Yeah, so I guess I can obviously mainly speak to myself. I have had quite a couple of discussions with HR before this um, panel discussion, but. Um, sort of reiterating what everybody else has said, I think it's really important as much as everyone's sort of trying to say what you can do to ex as exemplify what you feel to others. I think step number one is be 100% sure of yourself and what you want for yourself, um, because then it is a lot easier to communicate to others how you feel and what drives you once you're sure about what motivates you day to day. So. I know it can be quite stressful at uni when you're worrying about, you know, am I going to get a job? How am I going to get a job? All these things are really stressful. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to work for a company that you're happy to be there for. So I think it's really important for you to just be like, hey, what am I interested in? Am I interested in a specific industry? What is it that is going to motivate me to have a career in a certain industry? So for some of my friends who studied the exact same degree as me chemical engineering they were like I'm really interested in pharmaceuticals um, and being involved in the medical space or whether it be oh I'm really interested in you know food sustainability that's something else um, and that was their passion and so for me I quite early on I realized that my passion was um energy sustainability and so I did a lot of research into sort of what opportunities there were available in Australia and sort of researching all the companies and looking at their long-term strategic goals as well that's something you can look at besides their values so their values really dictate the culture that you might be in so 
whether it's very cooperative, whether it's um, maybe lots of international opportunities, that might be something that's interest of you, um, but also their long term strategy. So the constant evolving of Shell within Australia was really interesting to me. I, I sort of felt like it was moving with society and I was like, OK, like I can sort of it doesn't matter that I'm working at one company for maybe 20 years, but things are always changing and that's quite dynamic and that's really interesting to me. Um, in terms of what you can do to stand out, um, step number one, I think, is obviously reflect on what is in, of interest to you. And then from there, see if you can actually act on those interests. So if you're interested in, um, for example, I was really interested in the energy sector, I joined university clubs that also hosted events with um, people like Shell or BHP or things like that so that we could actually engage with them and I could learn about more what they, about what they did when I was at uni. Um, in terms of personal skills, I think grades aren't everything. So I know that at uni, it sometimes feels like that, but it's really good to also be a well-rounded person, um, working on all those professionalism, all those skills that um, everybody else was talking about, whether that means that you're just working part-time in retail, those are really good skills that you can apply to your um, you know, professional job as well. So just don't take that for granted. That's good work experience as well. Awesome. I got one. I got another question. I might actually throw to each each of you for this part. Um, this is a question about a typical day in the life. Uh, what you're doing day to day. I'm sure no two days are the same. Um, Genevieve, maybe you can kick us off. Um, tell us a little bit about. You talked about you know what you do more broadly, but tell us about a typical day in the life. What's what's exciting that you do um, at BHP? Yeah, okay, I'll talk about, because I'm quite new into this current role, so I'll talk about my previous role, um, what I'd do day to day in the reliability space. Um, so whenever there's a breakdown in the plant, we would work with the maintenance teams to go out and get some evidence and um, see why it's broken down and then do five whys or RCA analysis and create actions from that so that it doesn't happen again. We'd also look at the maintenance strategies and see how they could be optimised. Um, so either doing maintenance on a um, maintenance more regularly so that there's less breakdowns or doing it less regularly if we're over maintaining it. And always looking at that um, uh, cost production safety balance um to see how we can best maintain our assets um, with safety and another thing that's quite outside of the box that i did um well outside of the engineering space that i did within that role is develop the fixed plant maintenance budget so that was looking at all the maintenance we were going to do in the upcoming years how much each of those activities would cost and how much we think there's going to be an unforeseeable breakdowns and then budgeting that in Mario, I'm going to throw to you next. Same question. Typical day uh, at Rio Tinto. Sure. Um, so I work for, for anyone um, that doesn't sort of know about operations in Western Australia. I work fly in, fly out, which means that on a Monday morning, I fly an hour and a half from Perth up to my site. Um, and I live in a remote location. So I'm about 150 kilometres from the nearest town. Um, on site, we work 12 hour shifts. I typically get up about four o'clock in the morning. Um, I like to go to the gym before I go to work and there's a gym facility um, in camp. So I go to the gym um, and then I jump on the bus and I head into site, which is about 15 minutes away from camp. Um, site life, you're on site together for about 12 hours. Um, as, a, as a maintenance manager, I'm responsible for and the reliable operation of the fixed plant. So my role is quite strategic. I typically will get um, the business objectives cascaded down to me. Um, and then I really have to set the direction for the team in terms of, oh, sorry, environmentally friendly lights here. <laughs> um, I'll, set the, um, I'll set the strategy for the team. So my day is a mix of um, infield leadership, um, safety leadership, that's a huge component of my role, is, is the safe operations of our plant. Um, I'll have role, you know, meetings with reliability engineers, I might have meetings with um, finance, I might have meetings with the mine to determine mine plan and, and what, what sort of products are being delivered to the plant. So 
really changeable day to day. Um, the great thing, I guess, about my role currently is that I'm at a position in my career where I've got a bit of space to do the things that I really want to do. So I actually um, spend a lot of my time in the inclusion and diversity space, um, really progressing initiatives to try and drive female participation in the mining industry. So um, that's a, a really exciting part um, that I get to sort of do within my week. Um, and then I guess um, something that uh, something that you might not know about site life is that um, all of your food is provided for you. So I don't do any cooking uh, at all when I'm on site. Um, it's a really good part for me. I get to, to rock up and I, I choose my meals from what's made available um, at camp. And, um, and yeah, just use that to um, free up a bit of time for um, the parts of my role that do, that do require a bit more time and time. Steve. There's a, I might stick with you, Mari, sorry to keep you on the hop, hop there. Um, there's a great question here from Patrick uh, in the Q&A regarding just some, I'll read it out. Uh, the question is, um, you know, are 20 panelists is relocated or works in a remote area. Um, I would love to break into mining and resource industry, but I've never had any experience in the field before. How have you managed you know, relocating for work or any tips for someone who's always in the big city. Uh, since you've mentioned you're working remote, Mario, I might throw it all fly and fly out. I might start with you first and any anyone else on the panel wants to chime in, feel free, but I'll start with Mari first there. Sure, um, great question, Patrick. So um, many of um, the individuals that work in our remote operations do live in the big city. Um, so for us in Western Australia, much of our workforce works in Perth, uh, sorry, lives in Perth and actually commutes from Perth. Um, so I guess um, that is really where our talent pool comes from mainly. We do have regional recruitment campaigns where we've got centres in Broome, Busselton, Albany and Geraldton. Um, but Perth, for example, um, if, if the question's around how do I get experience whilst living in town or, or in a city, um, there's lots that you can do. So an example from, from my um, sort of vacation work, um, I actually worked with the environmental board and did some water quality testing. Um, what you're looking for in an application um, as a leader is, are there skills that are transferable? So if you have done something, it might be in the town, it might be in an office, but you can demonstrate that you have got practical skills. So wearing personal protective equipment, um, being in charge of some type of um, equipment or machinery or anything um, that you might have to use where you have to think about your safety and other safety and putting systems and processes in place. Um, that's all really tangible experience and it doesn't have to necessarily be from the mining and resources industry. Um, but in saying that, there are roles that are on site um, which don't necessarily have a practical element. So if I think about my health and safety advisors, if I think about our environmental advisors, our engineers, um, many of them don't actually require practical skills um, on site. They spend a lot of time going and having a look, collecting information, talking to stakeholders, um, but not actually participating in the physical work on site. So um, have a think about what your qualification um, might be able to be applied to um, in, a, in a sense for the mining industry. I'm not sure if anyone else in the panel has done any fly and fly out work or has relocated and wants to chime in as well. No, all good. Well, I might throw to Jamie. Um, question from earlier about day in the life. Give us a quick, quick spiel about what it is you do day to day. Um, so I have production maintenance mechanical maintenance, electrical maintenance reporting up to myself. So every day is very different. Um, it entails either 
For example, at the moment, I'm just going into a major shutdown. So being a part of the planning and execution and reporting up to the site management around um, the movement to my plan. Um, my role um, is also quite strategic in terms of looking at the next year and where we're trying to make improvements in the powerhouse, either reliability-wise, um, efficiency-wise, trying to reduce costs, keep the budget in, in check, or trying to optimise. Um, so power station on site is one of the biggest gas users. So there's quite a bit of money in burning gas. Um, so if I can optimise that in any way, um, that's, that's what I look for. Um, my role also has quite a few people reporting up to myself. So there's a people management um, section and trying to shape the culture into a inclusive and everyone feels um, included and comfortable to be themselves at work. And Claudia, same question. Typical day in the life. Yeah, so I am part of our operations WRFM space. So WRFM at Shell stands for uh, facilities, wells, well, no, wait, w, <laughs> wells, facilities, reservoir management. So it's an integrated process. So um, I think you've probably heard me mentioning optimization a couple of times. Essentially, our asset QGC as a, is as big as the UK and we have pipes underneath the ground as large as the UK. And so we have to figure out the best way to optimize the system every single day between all the different disciplines, um, which is why I love engineering. I think engineering is great for that sort of collaborative aspect. You're never gonna know all the answers, but you're gonna know some bits and you've got to piece those together with everybody else. So my job day to day, um, I'm currently covering two roles. So I'm a production engineer and a process engineer, which means I'm trying to find the bottlenecks between our things that are underground. So the wells that are underground and the gas that we're trying to get, as well as other compression facilities that we have on the surface or onshore. So in the typical day of a life of, I guess, we are speaking to the wells engineers, the operations engineers in the field, our operators in the field. It's a lot of communication. So um, we also have a power plant that we can utilize and divert gas to the power plant and create power instead of gas, which means that we're also talking to the trading team based on the economic environment of that day. So it is a very dynamic job. Um, sometimes we'll be trying to liquefy gas at an island called Gladstone so that we can send it off to Japan or things like that. And sometimes we lose a train there. And so it's really about balancing the whole network every single day when things go wrong. Awesome. Um, while I'm on you, Claudia, very quickly, because I'm conscious I've got a couple of minutes left, um, but very quickly for students who land a job with, with Shell, um, what advice would you give them to help them survive and thr thrive in their first year? Um, and is there anything they shouldn't do? Um, I think it's honestly just sort of said, like how I sp said, spend time reflecting on yourself before you start applying for jobs. Sort of be comfortable with your working style and know what that is, but also know that people's working styles are going to differ from yours. And so it's learning how to navigate that space when you're, especially in a big organisation like everybody that's um, on the panel today, you're always going to be working with lots of different people. So um, understanding how to navigate that space takes time and know that's okay. Everybody is not going to expect you to know everything, so ask questions. It's like that's the best thing I can say honestly and also something that I'm still working on is building that confidence sometimes you know the answer and you know someone who might be more senior than you might not be saying quite the right thing and sometimes you've just got to figure out how to be tactful about it but also it's okay to speak up and say that something might not be quite right throw to you quickly as well Genevieve for a quick response to the same question um any, any advice for anyone who like you know, first year on the job? Yeah, I think um, I've, I've uh, seen a few graduates come through that I've been training up and the things that I think really set apart the um, very high performers um, is two things. Number one is proactiveness. 
Um, so you're not going to know everything and nobody expects you to know everything, but just be proactive about trying to learn. Um, and if you are working on a task that um, your supervisor has given you and you're not sure what to do next, I, I would recommend never going to them and saying, what should I do next? But instead say, I've had a think about it. I've thought maybe we could do this or this. What are your thoughts? And show that you're being proactive and trying to think through what to do next. Um, and then the other thing that I think is really important is um, showing that you care about doing a good job and always trying your best and showing that work ethic and just really showing that you care um, about doing a good job, but also about um, making life better for those you're working with. So caring about the team um, and understanding that you're all working together um, towards the common goal. Yeah. Fantastic. Um Final question. I'm going to very, very quick from everyone. One sentence. Um, same question for everyone. One, one sentence. Why should students apply for your organisation? And I'm going to start with Jamie. Um, why should they apply for Alcoa? Um, I would say the um, diversity in options. Um, so you can start off as a graduate engineer and you could end up in say a graduate electrical engineer and you can end up in operations or management or between the sites you could be from Quinana through to wager up to mining to victoria um, so the diversity in um, the different disciplines and positions and also alcoa is in a fifo place so you can live at home and work in industry um, Genevieve, I'm going to go to you next. Um, why should one one sentence? Why should students apply for BHP? Um, hard to pick just one sentence, but um, <laughs> I'd say, as someone who's been through the graduate program, I think BHP has such a fabulous um, graduate program. You get rotated around to different areas. And you'll just get so much exposure to the business and learn so many things and be so well supported through the graduate program. Awesome. Mari, why should grads or interns, students apply for Rio? Um, yeah, great question. And um, Jamie's really covered a lot of what I was going to say, so I'm not, not going to say that. Um, Rio Tinto has some great people. Um, it is a really values driven organization. I have many, many friends that are my colleagues here. Um, and I think if you want to be well supported at the start of your career, which is really the pivotal point for you, um, I think Rio is a really great team to come into. And finally, Claudia, same question. Why should they apply for Shell? It's difficult when everybody said such good things. Um, <laughs> I guess for me, um, I really believed in our global vision. So it's not just about what we're doing here, but it's about the global opportunities and the network you have globally. So um, a lot of our training is in the Netherlands or Houston. Um, you get to travel the world and work on really challenging projects. So for me, I think you have to want to be challenged to work here. You have to want to think differently and you have to be willing to understand that Sometimes you're going to feel like a small cog in a big machine, but I've always felt like that's a great place to make change. And so surrounding yourself with people who have the same sort of vision as you and want to actually challenge the status quo and do things differently, just because we've been successful before doesn't mean we can't change, then it's a great place to be. Fantastic. Well, I think we'll um, call it quits there in terms of the focus session. Mm -hmm.